Mr. Muto Morrigan. Very easy to make it. I'm an Indian. Gold shade, gold watch, gold in the teeth. <laughs> so nice to see one of my Indian brothers here. <laughs> it's a nice feeling. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Buddha Murugan. I want to thank them for taking out the stand because I saw it was a little bit bent. I like my stand to be upright. So does my wife. Anyway. <laughs> My name is Mutu Murugan, and when they phoned me to be on Comedy Showcase, I told the organizer, please don't call me Mutu, because I'm now living in a white area, and I changed my name to McPherson. Get it right. <laughs> she says, can I come to your office to discuss this function? I said, why do you want to come to my office? You can't beat us Indians. We can steal the milk out of your tea. We'll sell you sand in the desert. We live and sell the fridge to an Eskimo. I mean, we came to this country to cut grass and plant cane. I mean, now we smoke grass and drink cane. So who cares? <laughs> we brilliant people. I mean, who can beat us? You can't beat us. You know, and then she says she wants to come to my office. I said, no, you come to my house. South Africa is changing. She says, where are you living? I said, I'm living in Queensborough, 290 Fremantle Road. You look for the biggest double-story face brick house. It's got a swimming pool in the front, double garage, 4x4 four four on the driveway, Mercedes Benz on the pavement. Next to that one, my house is. Very easy to find me. You won't have a problem. It's absolutely brilliant, you know. This is the amazing thing. But if I'm born again, I want to be born an Indian. And if there's a thing called reincarnation, I want to be born an Indian. Because when a white man asks Mahatma Gandhi, what do you wear under that white piece of cloth? Do you wear a brief or an underpants? He says, me, I don't wear anything because I believe in the freedom of movement. So basically, so I want to be definitely be born an Indian. You know, just recently, two weeks from now, you'll see me on SABC TV hosting my own program. And when I applied to host my home program, the director of SABC TV, panel of 12 producers, said to me, Mr. Murugan, what program would you like to host? I said, I'd love to host a program called 50-50. He says, we can't give it to you. I said, why? He says, because you're an Indian. I said, why? He says, you Indians are bargain hunters. <laughs> I said, that's unfair. I said, that's unfair. The whites have got SABC 1 and 2. The blacks got SABC 1, 2, and 3. Indians who bluffed us with Eastnet and Eastern Mosaic. I feel sorry for colored people. You gave them two minutes on police fire. <laughs> I said, why can't I host the program 50-50? Says, Mr. Murugan, if we give you Indian people the program 50-50, you people will call it 49.99, 49.99. So this is the sad thing about life. But this is the way the country is going. South Africa is a beautiful country. Beautiful country. We've got Indians, whites, coloreds, blacks. She's shocked. First time you've seen a chick talking on stage. I like you. I like you. You're cute. You remind me of my young days when I was fair like you. It's because of surfing I'm suffering like this today. There was a lady on my staff. She was pregnant. I told her, ma'am, you must drink milk. You'll get a white baby. She says, why, Mutu? Did your mother have black tea? Well, this is the sad thing about life. But this is the way life goes. But South Africa is a beautiful country. We've got Indians, we've got whites, we've got colors, we've got blacks, we've got hijacking, we've got Felicia. <laughs> <laughs> what else do we need? I mean, just last week I performed at the ICC. I was doing an international doctors' conference, and doctors were bragging about the advancement of medical technology in the country. And the doctor from America says, you can't beat us, because we can take a lung out of one man, we can put the lung into the next man, and in six weeks that man will look for a job. The guy from Germany says, who can beat us? Because we can take a kidney out of one man, we can put the kidney into the next man, and in four weeks, that man will look for a job. The guy from Russia says, who can beat us? We can take half a heart out of a man, put the half into the next man, and in two weeks, both of them will look for a job. The guy from South Africa says, who can beat us? We can take an asshole from Soweto, put him in parliament, next day, half the country is looking for a job. So this is the amazing thing about the way life goes. I who believe this? Beautiful country, South Africa. I love this country. I mean, we are all afraid of the disease of AIDS. Everybody's propagating against AIDS. I mean, they found a cure for AIDS, my friend. Lip eyes, put in your backside to keep the chaps away. Uh, I mean, if you don't like that, swallow a fork, it'll burglar guard your backside. It's absolutely safe. I mean, even. I mean, even when they question the president of Turkey, and they ask the president of Turkey, why are you in such great fear of AIDS? He says, if Italy attacks me from the rear, I wonder if Greece will help. <laughs> I mean, 
Having sex is not a bad topic. When one talks about sex in public, people think you're rude. I'm an ex-school teacher by profession. And I remember when a six-year-old child walked up to me and said, Sir, could you define sex for me? I said, son, it's just like Mnet. You haven't got it till you get it. <laughs> I mean, who says sex is bad? Sex is not bad. It's not bad. I mean, I remember when a, six, a standard eight pupil came up to me and said, Sir, could you define sex? I said, son, it's an injection from a projection to the midsection with affection without objection. So who says sex is bad? Sex is not bad. So I spoke to a couple of ladies on my staff. I said, would you do that to your husband? See a man go through such excruciating pain, living in a civilized society by resorting to an act of barbarianism. And the woman says to me, Mutu, it must have given her immense pleasure to see that man go through such excruciating pain. I said, but that's wrong. Because don't you know that the man's penis is the only thing in the world you can use all 26 letters of the alphabet to describe it? She says, impossible. I said, A, you can adore it. B, you can blow it. C, you can cuddle it. D, you can double it. E, you can excite it. F, you can fondle it. G, you can grease it. H, you can handle it. I, you can increase it. J, you can jiggle it. K, you can kiddle it. L, you can love it. M, you can moisten it. N, you can nurture it. O, you can outstretch it. P, you can pull it. Q, you can quash it. R, you can rub it. S, you can stroke it. T, you, you can toss it. U, you can upset it. V, you can violate it. W, you can wet it. X, you can examine it. And then the lady tells me, what about why? What about why? What about why? I said, if you do all that, it's yours. <laughs> she tells me, what if you don't do all that? I said, just zip it, all 26 come with. So who says, nothing's wrong with that. I love my wife. My wife is my right hand. I hope when my wife dies, I hope when my wife dies, my right hand doesn't become my wife. That will be another problem. I mean, women are wonderful people. They great gift to mankind. I mean, I've been married five times. This is the gospel truth. Because if you don't drink from the fountain of experience, you'll die of thirst in the desert of ignorance. My first wife was a millionaire's daughter. My second wife was an actress. My third wife was starting to be a priest. My fourth wife was an undertaker's daughter. They asked me, Muthu, why did you marry women in these categories? I said, very simple. One for the money, two for the show, three must get ready, four must go. So you beat the system. You just beat the system. I mean, I always believe. I like this gentleman, you got a lovely smile. You remind me of one of the characters from Bold and Beautiful. It's cute. You know, I always believe, and I sincerely believe this. Wife is a chosen word. W for a wisdom, I for a inspiration, F for a faithfulness, E for having to endure a man's terrible behavior patterns. I also want to say to all housewives, W-I-F-E stands for washing, ironing, food, etc. Don't forget that. That is a necessity. Don't ever forget that. You know, ladies and gentlemen, businessmen have this dirty, filthy, lying, disgusting, stinking habit of going home late to the wife and lying to the wife that we involved with a bank appointment or a business commitment. If you go home late to your wife, please tell your wife you love her because if you don't do it, somebody else is going to do it for you. <laughs> My neighbor suspected his wife of having an affair and he, he only trusted Joseph the garden boy. He says, Joseph, tell me exactly what the missus does when I'm not here. He says, hi, boss. He comes, he talks to she, she talks to he. They go into the house, they close the door, then me no see. He says, Joseph, tomorrow tell me exactly what happens. He says, hi, boss. He comes, he talks to she. She talks to he. They jump in the car, they drive away. Me got no car to follow and go and see. He says, Joseph, I promote you. Use the car in the garage. So the next day he comes, he says, what happened, Joseph? He says, hi, boss. He comes, he talks to she. She talks to he. They jump in the car, they drive away. Me take your car because you asked me to follow and go and see. Then they come to a big building called hotel. They collect key, they take, they take lift, they go upstairs. Me climb on tree because you asked me to see. He says, then boss, they go inside and me sit on the tree because we waiting to see. He says, then boss, he plays with she, she plays with he, me play with me, me fall from tree, me don't see. So this is the amazing thing about life. This is the way it goes. You know, it's not easy to come out here and speak. A lot of people ask me, hey, Mutu, where do you get the courage to speak? I was performing in Cape Town, the Galaxy, one of the most prestigious nightclubs in South Africa. I was doing an international sales conference. And the founder guy who sold the highest number of Bibles in the world was a man who stammers and stutters. And they asked him, how did you achieve selling the highest number of Bibles in the world when you have a speech impediment? He said, the size of a man is judged by the obstacle it takes to keep him down. He said, could you demonstrate to the audience how you go about selling your Bibles? He says, <laughs> then I tell the customer, I'm s s selling b b b b b Bibles. Then I, 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 ask the customer, would he, 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 would he like to buy a Bible, or would he, or would he, would he, would he like me to read it for him?